So thank you so much. Welcome, Mr. Brad Gillis of Night Ranger to Linea Rock. We are honored to have you here and uh, can't wait to see the show tonight in Milan. We are, it's the 21st of June and we're in Raw. And uh, Night Ranger, Foreigner and Journey are playing tonight in Lizzie as well. Yes. So let's start with our questions. Um, new album, Summer in California, was released June 17th in Europe and today, actually, June 21st, in the US. Uh, it's pure classic and it celebrates the 30th anniversary of Night Ranger. So how can you introduce it to the fans that didn't have the chance to have a listen to it already? Well, I gotta tell you, we're real excited about this new CD and it was released in Japan a month ago and now in Europe and the US today, we're very excited because we went into doing this record with a very, very large amount of energy. We were excited to go in and just do a really uplifting, up-tempo CD. And we tried to get back to the grassroots of Die Ranger would be the classic three, four-part harmonies and the twin dual guitar assault. So we really wanted to get back to the roots of Die Ranger and really do a kick-ass record. And I'm sure you're responsible of the guitar attack in it. Is well, it you know, I, uh, I write a lot of music. I do a lot of music for ESPN and Fox Sports and, and all these different uh, TV stations around the world, actually. And when I'd write these music bits, whenever I'd write something that was very good in my mind, I would put it to the side for Night Ranger knowing that we were going to be doing an album soon and having the new members, my bro and partner in crime, Joel Hoekstra on guitar, and our newest addition, Eric Levy on keyboards, we just really wanted to go in there with the excitement. And when we all got together in a room and started throwing down these riffs of mine and riffs of everybody else's and vocals, and the excitement was just overwhelming, and we knew we were on to something. I uh, thought this is probably the first record you'd only hear one ballad from Night Ranger. We usually put do two or three or whatever, but I'm glad we kind of kept it to the straight ahead rock or up tempo because right now our frame of mind is excitement and we wanted to exude that on the new CD. Growing up in California, which is also a song on the record, really made the big difference for Night Ranger. What do you think? I tell you, man, that song was written by Jack and uh, a buddy of his and ours uh, named Will, and, and they had written that song for Jack's solo record. And when Jack asked me to come and, and play on the record, when I came and heard it, I said, Jack, it's a Night Ranger song. I said, really? I said, yeah, man. We gotta replace the drums with Kelly's and do some more guitars with Joel and me and make it a Night Ranger song. And sure enough, we kept it, and, and it was so brilliant, uh, the, the way he wrote it and the lyrics and everything. Uh, we put it uh, on the record and made it the first song and the first video single. So we're very excited about it. And when you listen to the lyrics, it's all about California, the place we all grew up in. California is so beautiful. It's, you know, you have your beaches and you go three hours to the east and you're in the Sierra snow. Of course, the Bay Area with the Golden Gate Bridge and Fisherman's Wharf and all the beautiful area and the North Bay. And then you go to, down to Southern California and you have Hollywood, Disneyland, Sunset Strip, Hollywood Boulevard and all the beautiful ocean beaches down there. So we really, you know, the whole premise of the song that Jack captured on the lyrics was to let people know what California was really like. Of course, you go up in somewhere in the Midwest, it's like you've never been to California, or you're in Japan, or you're in Europe, it's like, what's California like? And it's a beautiful place, and, and the song pretty much portrays and depicts what it's all about. Night Ranger music puts a smile on your face and makes your heart beat, you know, so that's also because you're from California? No, because I'm a very happy person at heart. <laughs> okay. I grew up with a great family that taught me, you know, just to be happy, and uh, and I'm a I'm a happy guy. You know, I whenever there's trouble, whenever things are negative, I put that behind me, and I always live for today and the future. I don't live in the past. About Eric and Joe, new guitar player and new keyboard player. Yes. Um, did you? I mean, they were recommended by someone, or did you make any auditions, and what does it take to play with Night Ranger? Well, Joel came in after Red Beach departed. We were with Red for a while and did uh, a tour in Japan, the States with him, and, 
And when he left the band, uh, Kelly had been playing with Jim Peterick and a few other guys in the in the in the Midwest doing shows, uh, uh, doing with different lead singers would come in and they would all do their hit songs. Yeah, Kelly, world stage. Yeah, world stage. Yeah. And of course, uh, Kelly would come up and do "Sing Me Away" and such Christian songs like that. But Joel was the guitar player in that outfit, and he was the guy that came in and had to learn 50 songs, you know, by all these other artists and. And Joel, I mean, excuse me, Kelly said, he goes, man, we got to check out Joel. He's great. This guy is, you know, he's right on top of it. He, I guess he learned the eight finger technique when he was 14 years old. And, he, and you know, he's a big fan of Night Rangers. And, and when he came and did our first show, we were already on the road. We didn't even rehearse with him. We did a sound check with him and he played that first night and he was flawless. And I never forget because he, you know, he had his hair back, you know, tied in a ponytail. And, and uh, I said, dude, let your hair down. We let that mane down and shook it around and go, good rock and roll, you know. I cut mine years ago. Mine doesn't look good long anymore. Doesn't even look good short. But anyway, <laughs> he's got some great hair and he threw it down. He plays great. He's got that great rock image that uh, that, that we needed to uh, in this band. And uh, just playing with him is a total excitement for me. I mean, he, he pushes me, keeps me on my toes. It's a different style, you know, and we complement each other, but we come together through these dual harmonies, and you know, yeah. and uh, and it's great to get through this record. And we took a little longer on this record just because we wanted it right. We usually spent two to three months on a record. We spent about four and a half on this one just to make sure we had the right songs, the right mix, the right just you know, package. Yeah, sure. And what about Eric? Eric, boy, well, he would play it on Jack's solo record. Eric lives up in Santa Rosa by Jack, a few minutes from Jack's house. And he had Eric come in and play in a solo record. And when we started going in the studio, he said, man, we got to bring Eric up to play, do some, do some stuff on the record. So when we got him in, we were all sitting in the room writing these songs and getting things together. He just blew us away. And so when we finished the record, it's like, you want to come out and tour with us? And he's like, hell yeah. So we've been, uh, you know, we've done about 10 or 15 shows with, with, with Eric so far and every night he just gets better and better and we have the right combination, we have the right record, we have the right crew and band and, and we've already done quite a few shows with Journey earlier this year, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Las Vegas, Reno and, and after this run in Europe we go back and do 60 shows in the U.S. with Journey, Foreigner, Night Ranger. And at this day and age, it's the best year I've had since 1988. So it's going to be a non-stop touring summer, this one. Oh yeah, but the, what's great about it is uh, having a new, new CD out that everybody's yeah. proud of. It's getting great reviews. Very excited about that. But is it still exciting to go on the road for you after so many years? And is this going to be a new start for Night Ranger? I mean, we can expect more albums and uh, the, this lineup to go on. Well, you know... Success breeds love oh, right. and camaraderie between everybody. Everybody loves a winner and within a band, if you've got a winning combination, a major tour, a major worldwide release of a record, nothing better than that. Like I said, this is the best year I feel we've had since 1988. Uh, we're probably doing 100 shows this year. Uh, when we got back together back in 95, and, you know, we did 30 shows, maybe 40, and the next year maybe 40 or 50, and then 60, 70, and, Last year I think we did 75 and this year we're up to 100 and uh, there's no complaints. The only hard thing is going to be leaving home for a straight three months on a bus tour. But you end up, you know, you learn to love it and the accommodations are great and, uh, and everybody in this band gets along real well and we have a lot of fun, a lot of laughter, a lot of joke and a lot of, you know, there's no pompous rock star attitudes here because everybody checks everybody in line. All right. So it starts getting out of hand. <laughs> They're checked and they back down, so it's a great combination. We're looking forward to it. Night Ranger started as a jazz and funk rock band. Um, how was that the next step, you know, to, to become um, a melodic hard rock band? I mean, that was a pretty smart move because you had a big success, but uh, I cannot figure, you know, how that happened. And well, you were already you're, in the band? You're, you're referring to Rubicon. Rubicon was yeah. the band that in the late 70s that I was in with Jack and with, uh, uh, with uh, Jerry Martini who played saxophone for Sly and the Family Stone. Now, 
it was a funk, it wasn't a jazz band, it was a funk rock band. So basically, uh, it was three piece horn section, Jack was playing funky slap bass, and they hired me to play rock guitar over that basic format. So when I came in, I just laid down power chords over these uh, funky riffs and, and, and bass lines. And it was a nice little thing for our little three year run. We had a top 20 hit called I'm Gonna Take Care of Everything. But what we were trying to do, we were trying to bridge the gap between disco and rock. Because in 75, the whole disco thing was exploding. Yeah. So with the horn section, and we tried to bridge the gap and tried to cross over both and it didn't work. But, but we had a good little run. And the cool thing is, uh, when it did come to the end, Jack and I stayed together and Kelly had joined the band at the very end of Rubicon and that morphed into a band called Stereo which was short-lived and then we got Jeff Watson and Alan Fitzgerald in the band and in 1980 we started what was then called Ranger. Mm -hmm. We finally got our, you know, we tried shopping our demos and we hadn't got any uh, big response uh, from record companies so I had the call from Sharon Arden she was almost his manager back in 1982 to go on the road after Randy Rose was tragically killed in a plane crash. And uh, it was a Cinderella story how I got the call and I went to New York and auditioned got the gig. And, you know, we toured for a good 10 or 11 months, went all over the world twice, and recorded the Speak of the Devil live record. And right towards the end, Rudy Sarzo had left Ozzy to go with Quiet Riot. And then, you know, changes started happening in the band and we got the call, I got the call saying if I were to rejoin Night Ranger then we had a record deal and I liked that idea only because I didn't feel like, I didn't want to feel like a side man, I felt like a side man with Ozzy and with Night Ranger we were a unit, we were a band, everybody was equal partner members and I'll never, I'll never forget in 1983, uh, Speak of the Devil uh, from Ozzy and Night Ranger's Dawn Patrol, our first record, were released the same week in the United States. And there's a uh, magazine for all the radio people called Album Network. And at the bottom of the page, they do the two picks of the picks of the week, different bands. Ozzy's and Night Ranger's records were at the bottom, and I was the first guy to ever have two releases the same week. Very exciting for me. But then, shoot, we went out and started touring with ZZ Top and Cheap Trick and, and all these big bands and started making a name for ourselves because MTV just came out. And we were all over with Don't Tell Me Love Me, all over TV. And then, you know, then we did the second record and all of a sudden we had, you know, uh, Still Rockin' America, big MTV hit. And then when we released uh, Sister Christian, all of a sudden, and went straight to the top, we didn't have to open anymore. We started headlining and I'll never forget, in 1984, pulling into La Crosse, Wisconsin, an 8,000 seat Coliseum, and on the marquee it said Night Rangers sold out. So that was a pinnacle for Night Rangers' early success. And we went on from then to, to play 200 plus shows a year until 1989. So it was pretty exciting, a lot, you know, uh, it was a lot of happening, work. you know, and uh, yeah, very exciting, but a lot of work. Like I said, we tour for nine months, and then we come off the road and we do a record for the next three months. So yeah. we were busy twelve months out of the year. We were very, very busy. Was it better in a sense back then, or it's better now? What do you think? I mean, was most more exciting back then? It was very exciting back then, but it's very exciting now. Great. We had a very exciting career. <laughs> you know, the only lull was, you know, when we did get back together in 1995, um, we kind of had to start over again, in essence. You know, we had to build it back up. And uh, our last couple records mm -hmm. didn't do so well. But now we got somewhere in California. And like I said, it's getting great reviews. And, and the, the pre sale orders are going off the charts. We have a major tour to back it up with. So, it's very exciting again for um, us. Do you change the set list every night? I mean, did, did you have the chance to test the new songs? Well, we live? just came back from Japan, and in Japan we did four shows, and they all went great, and our CD was released a couple days before we got there. And it seemed like every fan that came to our shows, the two shows in 
Tokyo and Osaka and Nagoya, they were singing all the words. They knew everything. And, you know, chanting along. And I thought, how great is that? Just like the old days, you know? So it went over great Japan. In Europe, I'm very surprised because these festivals we've been doing, when we come on to play, it seems like about 90% of the audience is in the venue. And that's very exciting because sometimes opening acts, not that I want to be considered a freaking opening act, so they've been playing 30 years, but uh, they've been coming to, with curiosity to check out my future. Sharing the stage with Journey and Foreigner, uh, all giants of melodic rock, as you are, um, you're spreading the word of uh, the good melodic rock around yes. Europe, uh, actually, now. and. Uh, does this create any competition between you guys? I mean, the fact that you're doing the same kind of music and uh, you were there, you know, same years, and you you, you all sold millions of albums. Uh, I gotta tell you, you know, oh, uh, we've known Journey for over 30 years. In fact, I remember being with Rubicon in San Francisco, rehearsing at SIR Studios, and we had the little room, and in the big room was Journey, and they were auditioning a new singer one day, Steve Perry walked. Walked in the building, we all saw him and closed the door and we heard him sing. We went, oh my god, they have a new singer. So basically, we've been friends with these guys. We toured with them two years ago. We did a month tour with them then. We've been doing shows with them here and there for the last 30 years. But we all get along so good, they asked us to come back. Now, Foreigner, we came to Europe with Foreigner. We did our tour back in 1985 with them. We all got along. Everybody gets along. And there's not real competition because everybody is great in their own right in what they do. And I look at it as just a great package. And hopefully, it'll be the classic rock tour of the summer. Yeah. I mean, that's how we're looking at it. Our pre-sales in the US are great. A lot of venues that we're not playing for another two months or more are sold out. 15,000 seats. That's exciting. Yeah, it is. Um. Sister Christian, which is also featured in the Broadway show uh, Rock of Ages, and also in movies, video games, um, is one of the most played songs in classic rock radios all around the world. Um, and is the song that the fans most expect maybe you to play you know, live in each of, uh, of your shows. Uh, how do you relate to the song now? Is still a blessing for you or is it became an enemy, in a sense. I gotta tell you, there's nothing better than having the whole audience sing along to a hit song. You know, I don't care that I played it maybe 3,000 times in my 30-year career. It doesn't matter. I still enjoy playing it. I love playing my guitar solo in it. I love hearing everybody sing along to it. Songs like that, it's still rock in America, and Don't Tell Me Love Me are yep. staples for Night Ranger. And also, when you close your eyes, Sentimental Street. Goodbye. We were lucky enough to have quite a few hits to fill our set. The only drag about doing the shows here and in the States coming up is we have a short set. So we definitely wanted to get new songs in the set. So we're definitely doing uh, going up in California. And uh, we kind of throw, mix it up a little and do a couple other new songs here and there, depending. But uh, and then we always do the Night Ranger hits. That's what we're all about. We, were, we would never be a band that would say, oh, I'm tired of playing that song. Let's don't play that hit. You know, I mean, I hear bands that you know, play show and they won't play the big hit or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I think that's not good. Bands want to hear the hits and we try to give them the hits. Which are your memories of the Hero and Aid project? You've wow. been one of the main guys in that. When I walked into that room and saw everybody from Ingve to Ted Nugent to Neil Sean to you know George Lynch and all those great guitar players in there, I, I personally thought, how am I going to be a cut above? I really did. I thought, man, we had all these shredders. And I'll tell you, I'm not a shredder. I have my moments, but I'm into playing melody and wanging on this thing, right? That's it's my style. That's what I do. So what I did. And, what I, the attitude I came in with was just do a wild whammy solo. And it's so funny because uh, so many years since we've done it that all these different uh, people come up to me and say that, uh, say that, uh, uh, you know, 
I know that's you. I hear your solo, or your guitar playing, you know, and your whammy bar. Like, well, that's cool, you know. Uh, did my own thing. And it was great, and, you know, I mean, the, the whole session, Ronnie James deal, may you rest in peace. Uh, everybody was so nice, and everybody got along, and, and you know, all these biggest guitar players in the world converging it to one studio to do this project. Was so it was intense. even quite flattering to be called to do I that. I was very flattering yeah. to be called. You kidding me? <laughs> I felt the love. Uh, so last question. Uh, in an episode of the TV series American Dad, I love that. <laughs> Stan and Roger are stoned. Yeah. And um, on a paper by Chia about uh, how to know if you're under the influence of illegal, illegal substances, uh, it's indicated one, cotton mouth, two, life seems pretty good, and three, you generally enjoy Night Ranger. So any comment on that? <laughs> I saw that, I laughed my ass off. And Seth MacFarlane loves this band, but he loves to twist on it. Yeah. And that's no problem because, in the words of Sammy Hagar, any press is good press. Yeah. Any TV, it doesn't matter. For 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 the little alien stands up the little alien guy's name. What's his name? Uh, uh, Stan and Roger, both. It's uh, the 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 little one is Stan. Stan. Yeah. When he said, he says, "No, that's Night Ranger." Night Ranger. <laughs> to know that was going on national TV. In the United States, anybody that never heard of the band or may have heard that song yeah. definitely knew it was Night Ranger. I loved it. And of course, it was Sister Christian on the radio. There you go. <laughs> Our biggest hit. No, it was wonderful. Oh. I laughed my butt out. Okay, do you want to leave a final message to the Italian people and people all over Europe that's, that are watching this? I just want to say we're very thankful to come over to Europe and be able to release a new record and play some huge shows with some huge bands. And I hope you all come out and see us, check out the new record. And if that's if any indication of how it's gone so far, we will be back. We will be back. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much, Brett. <laughs> and please go and buy somewhere in California. Bye. Thank you very much. By Night, Night Ranger. Ranger. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, bye.